All right. Well, um, the point of tonight is not to teach you everything there is to know about satellite because that would take weeks, and first I'd have to learn it. Um, so, uh, well, the, the the general idea is to hopefully give you enough information to either say yes, I'm interested in this, or no, that's not my thing. So, kind of we're starting off. What is a satellite? They're they're not that they're not that big. That was one of the things that kind of surprised me. You know, the space station's pretty good size, but the average satellite that you're going to talk on the radio is on about the size of a milk crate. Um, SO50 is a, a kind of a popular one. That lilac sat, I like that picture with the team that works on it because it really gives you a perspective of what size the things are. You know, it's sitting on a table with all them standing around it there. You know, about the size of a milk crate or your standard carry-on bags. So. Yeah, just put up my hands, built and, and set up. Yep. My hands. Um, I think I might have a note in here somewhere or another like that. They all kind of, uh, they all have goofy number letter designations. Um, the SO stands for um, Saudi Oscar. Um, so it's a Saudi launch satellite. The Lilac cast, that's, uh, I don't even know where that one's from. So they put, the, they put their own initials on whoever. Yep, the, the, the O, the, the, Usually it's like, um, I don't know, I'm probably having, a, it, it, we'll get to it on the next set of deals here. Um, so they're pretty low power. You know, the, the lowest one that I could find just off the top of my head was SO50, and that's 250 milliwatts. You know, not a, not a heck of a lot of output on there. Uh, AO7 has a watt. It's got actually three transponders. It's got a one watt um, repeater, a 200 milliwatt beacon, and an eight watt something that I, um, the AO7 was kind of a fun fact one um, when I was researching how to get access to that one because it's not always active. It was launched in 81 and then had a, or had a failed battery in 81. And 20 years later, the battery decayed enough where it shorted out um, to, and it made the connection so it can run off of solar panels when it's in the sun. So no batteries, but when, it, when it's fully illuminated, um, it can run off... Uh, it can run the repeater circuit. So that was kind of cool that 20 years later the thing finally comes to life. And uh, Fairly sensitive on the receivers, 5 to 10 watts is all you need to get into them. On average, um, they're cruising. Uh, space station is 17,500 miles per hour, or about you know, almost 5 miles a second. You know, and you're thinking, you know, space station, but the other satellites are, are uh, moving j about just as fast to keep their orbit orbit. So you got a milk crate shooting at 18,000 miles per hour you're trying to hit with a little antenna on five watts. So um, presents a little bit of a challenge. Um, and they're about 250, 500 miles off the surface. So. AMSAT is the kind of the US version of the satellite. It's kind of a satellite club. They, they handle five of the satellites out there. Um, and you know, there's some others too, like the Saudi Arabia has got a good program, and there's a program in the UK. Uh, the AO is AMPS, it stands for AMSAT Oscar, since so all, the, all the AMSAT ones are A. So Oscar is just uh, orbiting satellites carrying amateur radio. Um, Husky, that HO, or, yeah, I do got an HO on there. That's Husky, Husky Labs in Washington um, handles or launched that one. Falcon Sat is kind of a unique one because it's a it's a packet bulletin board system, so it's got a lot of store and forward and, and bulletin board. So the fun part we get into operating. Um, these are the most common modes of operation. There may be others, um, but these are kind of the standard. They're all VHF, UHF, um, no HF for because if you remember from Jeff's technician class. If he's gotten to that part yet, HF doesn't go punch through that uh, ionosphere very well. So it's kind of useless for, uh, it, it's great for DX because it'll bounce it all over the world for you, but don't try and hit a satellite because it won't work. So VHF, UHF, um, they'll punch through. And uh, so there's FM repeaters, um, there's single sideband, um, also referred to, you know, they're referred to a lot as linears. But uh, when you hear linear, it's actually using single sideband. Uh, there's slow CN TV off of a couple of them. The space station, I think, is kind of the most known one. Um, packet bulletin board, store and forward messaging. Um, the Falcon Sats are 
are is kind of the the big one for that, but there's a few others that have um, packet. Um, most of them have at least one beacon that just sits there and repeats the same thing forever all day long um, in either voice or CW. And uh, there's uh, also data. Um, a lot of it's ASFK um, and, tele and telemetry. Um, if you get the right software, you can download and see how full the batteries are, what the state of whatever experiments, you know, a lot of them, um, those Oscar satellites, um, it says carrying amateur radio because that's really not their primary purpose. Their primary purpose is some sort of space experiment. Um, but they do, but they let you put, in, but they let somebody put a transceiver on there um, for radio as well. So. What you need to talk to talk to them, uh, full duplex radio is um, preferred. You can also use two radios or a dual band HT. You can get by. This is a this is the any tone I used at Ripley. It is not full duplex, but it does have. Um, it does have a dual or dual watch or monitor, and I kind of like this one because you can see both channels on the screen and flip between them fairly easily. Um, I've done it with the VX6, which is just you know an older Yesu. You can do it with a you could do it with a Baofeng if you really wanted to. I wouldn't recommend it, um, but uh, we'll get into why you want full duplex later. But uh, IC9700 is uh, a good full duplex one for a base station. Uh, the FT-817, 857, 897, a lot of guys use those, they, you need two of them, or they'll, or they'll use two of them. Uh, the Kenwoods, the older Kenwoods are, actually have um, full duplex. Uh, the 710, I think there's a 701 or something like that. 700. 700. 700 yep. and 710. Yep. Some of the older loads, a lot of the guys snap those up for satellite because you just need one radio then hanging around your neck. Antennas, this, um, you're trying to point at that little thing um, with 5, 10, 10 watt handheld or, or 6 watts on a Yesu or something. Um, you need some gain to get up there and, and punch through there. This is an 8 dB, this is a 8 dB Yagi from Aero antenna. Um, this is what I've been using. It works pretty good. It all breaks down and fits in that nice little roll up bag. Um, you do, you need to, uh, you know, this is about the cheapest option at 100. You can get them for 100 bucks. Um, this one's 150 with the with the duplexer built in. Um, so it just depends on what you want to what you want to do. Base stations will a lot of times will have two of them, or they'll have a circular polarized antenna, um, so that you know, depending on if they have a rotor, automatic rotor or not, with cat control to move it around. Um, this one here, you just have to turn it. The long long sides are the VHF and the short ones are the UHF. So uh, you're going to need uh, some pass predictions or uh, I don't know how to say this Keplerian elements. I, they're mostly most everyone just calls them Keps, and uh, it's very technical. I tried to look at it and my eyes glazed over instantly. But kind of basically. It's a bundle of, of information that tells you how to track that satellite through the sky, how fast it's spinning and moving and, and crazy stuff that computers do really well and I don't. Um, you can use uh, some tracking software. There's cell phone apps. Um, I got a couple of software we'll look at in a bit. You need your upload and download frequencies and your access tones. Um, just like repeaters, most of them have a, have a tone you need to program in to use. Um, some of them also require transmitting a separate tone first to arm the repeater before you transmit on your other tone. So that uh, kind of trips people up. I know it tripped me up. How would you know that? Uh, the, they are, AMSAT is a really good source for that. Whoever handles the satellite will usually publish those. AMSAT.org has a lot of them on there where, where you, they'll have uh, tables of which tone. I'll, one of the software I'll show you kind of has them built in. It's kind of neat. Um, transponder schedules, uh, they're kind of on the same, same with a lot with the same information. A lot of these, you know, they'll have more than one transponder or they'll have a beacon or they'll have a bu bulletin board system or some sort of packet. They're not all on at the same time because these things are tiny and they got a little battery and they can't do a whole lot at once. Um, so a lot of times only one will be on at a time 
and there'll be a schedule, you know, depending on what they want to do. If they're doing some educational stuff, they might have something else flipped on over one continent, but flipped to something else in another continent. So um, check the transits, check the transponder sponder schedules is a good idea. Uh, you need to know your grid square because that's it's a lot like FT8. You're it's in and out fast since you got a limited about you know nine to fifteen minutes if you're lucky. Um, so to make a couple contacts, so it's you know call sign grid seventy three and you're out. Um, that's where the digital voice recorder comes in handy. Um, it's a, if you're sitting there trying to write stuff down rapid fire and we'll kind of get into that a little bit. It's hard to keep track of stuff, so I, the voice recorder helps a lot because you can just play it back later. And just all you have to do then is concentrate on catching the guy's call and shooting it back. Headphones um, are great. You can get rid of your feedback loops, especially if you're using two handhelds. Um, we'll have a nice example of some squeal in one of the videos I got. Uh, paper, pen, if you got to write stuff down, it's good. Open squelch is another big thing. You know, when you're trying to listen for that satellite to come in and and if you got your, if you forget to turn off your squelch, like you're on a repeater, you're you, you're probably not going to hear it coming in right away. So turn that thing off, open it all the way up so you can hear all that static goodness and and find right when it comes in. This is uh, two of the software programs for satellite tracking. Um, Sat PC32 is kind of the, the the standard out there, I guess. Amsat pushes it. It's, it is a paid software, but the demo works for free. It's just got some annoying little glitches you got to poke through every time you start it. It's got, you know, and, and it's not bad software. It's got about the worst interface you can imagine to run. So um, kind of faulted on that. Gpredict is an open source one. That's the one I prefer just because it, I'm more comfortable using it. It, it does what I want to do and thinks the way I think it should work. So um, both of them do cat control. You know, if you want to set up a home station with automatic rotors and tracking, they all there's a few more features in G-Predict, um, but a little slower development since it's a, a couple of hams that do it in their free time, which is always up in the air as to what that is. So, if I have a G-Predict up here. And I'll have this up afterwards if anyone wants to come up and play with the, the SAT tracking programs. But just give you an give idea what you're looking at. Um, get on the other screen here. This is uh, showing our location and then all the little circles, their little satellites and their footprint. Um, we got pass schedules on the bottom there showing when the next passes are. You got a polar grid, so when it's actually over your head, you can tell, you know, if it's overhead or you know where you are in your range. And then you got um, a lot of data and some of the some of the keps over there, telling you how fast it's going and you know, what's your basically how to orient yourself to to get the best contact on there. So I'll have a couple of those up later if people want to play with those. There's also a cell phone app. The heavens above one is pretty decent. Um, it lists, it's not as fancy, you know, with the footprints and all that, but it will show you when the passes are. So if you're out and about, you can, you can pull it up and see which direction you need, what it's going to be coming in on and, and what time. A few of the kind of the, the unspoken ground rules. Um, don't transmit if you can't hear the satellite, and it kind of goes with anything in radio. If you can't hear anything, don't expect that uh, someone's going to get back to you if you transmit. You're more than likely just going to get in the way. Uh, limit your power. Um, 100 watts is that absolute max. Don't start there. Start at 5, 10, and, and go on up. That's usually enough, depending on where the pass is. If you're, uh, you know, if it's right over your head, 5, 10 watts is all you're ever going to need. If you're way at the outer edge trying to hit the thing, you might, you know, go up to 50 watts. 25 watts depending on what you what how busy it is if there's a lot of people trying to get into it and how far out it is and what the weather is and, and all that fun stuff so uh, always use the phonetics everything goes really fast no one has time to to try and pick you out and it's scratchy and you got polar fading and you got doppler and you got all sorts of stuff going on so just use the phon phonetics and uh, you'll be happy 
pastime is, you know, it is limited. You're going to get roughly 5 to 9 to 15 minutes max if you're really lucky. So don't hog it. Um, give some other people a chance to get on there. And like we said before, the QSO is as simple as call sign grid square and thanks, see you later. Jeff, is there a lot of people using satellites? There, every time I've heard one, it's always buzzing. So, I mean, it's bam, 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 bam. Everyone's getting in there. And most, for mostly people are pretty polite, but it's, I mean, it's, you got to be kind of Johnny on the spot if you want in there. Um, one of the main challenges is the, is the polarization fading. You're going to get, you know, that, that satellite is, uh, tumbling around up there going 18,000 miles an hour little cube and that thing is spinning it's only got you know one or two antennas on the corner or whatever and that thing's spinning all over the place and so your antenna's going all over the place so that's that's where you get these handhelds you know are really handy because you're going to be constantly adjusting and turning to make sure that your antenna is oriented with the satellite and you it, it's pretty that part's the easy part because you can tell you know you'd you'll see the guys twisting or, and you'll get it right away. If that starts to fade, you'll start to twist a little bit and it'll pop right back in just like they're standing next to you. It's really kind of fun to, kind of fun to hear, but it, uh, it happens fast. So, um, circulars, polarized on circular antennas are really expensive, but you don't have to twist them as much. You just kind of point and shoot. Um, or you'd have fun like most of us do. And I actually did. I do have a video with that one. This is just a short, it kind of demonstrates some polar, polar, polar flake. There you kind of hear it fading out and he's twisting and it'll pop back in. There's that feedback loop for two hand handsets or something without headphones. So. Listen to that squealing as much as you guys do. So, all right. That's my mouse here. So, Doppler is another uh, a fun effect that uh, that uh, can uh, make it a challenge. Got the right one here. Yep. Um, it's not as pronounced on the two meter, so you don't typically don't have to adjust that a whole lot. Um, 70 centimeters is the big one where that really happens. Um, so it's you're going to be FM. You're going to be clicking your, moving your frequency plus or minus five kilohertz. You know three four times throughout the pass. Just kind of you'll hear it fade out and and you just click to the next. A lot of us program your radios um, to have a few frequencies five kilohertz apart. You know and then you can just you hear it fading out and you just click to the next one and then you're good for another minute or two until you click to the click it again uh, on the linears with the sideband it's a royal pain in the rear because you're constantly adjusting it on those uplinks so there uh, there are certain we'll get into it, get ahead of myself too much here uh, the 70 centimeter downlink is pretty easy um, if it's fuzzy you go down five kilohertz um, AOS is acquisition of signal, so that's when you first hear it, that's AOS. Um, LOS is loss of signal, so that's when you're done, it's faded out. Um, at, uh, so that's when you're going you're gonna to start at your acquisition of signal, you're actually going to be 10 kilohertz above where the satellite's frequency is. And then as it comes across, you're going to adjust down by 5 kilohertz, and by the end of it, you're going to actually be 10 to 15 below um, the, the signal of the satellite. 
uplink is where it gets fun on centime 70 centimeters. Um, so you're going to be transmitting up a lot. So if you're losing it, you're going to go up 5 kilohertz. You're going to start 10 below. And at the end, you're going to be 10 to 15 above the uplink. So that's one of the reasons why that full duplex radio is really important, is if you just got one with monitor, you can't hear yourself when you're talking. You're not going to be able to tell on when you're adjusting those uplinks for Doppler. You're not going to be able to tell if you're if you're on or not. So, um, kind of makes it makes it really hard on those. So that's why it's important to have full duplex capability. Another little clip of just. So this is showing on the 70 centimeter uplink. You're gonna just how how fast that you'll see is the voice will kind of start to sound like a chipmunk, and it'll start cranking like crazy on that dial to keep her in control. Then you can hear it coming back in. Uh, so that's what Doppler sounds like on the satellites. And that's a kind of a typical example of the Yesu setup where they got the two, one for uplink, one for downlink. Uh, a couple of these are FM satellites, so basic repeater ones, um, good starter ones. Um, that means you're, if uh, the uplinks are on VHF, so you're not going to have to do a whole lot of adjusting besides those, you know, five kilohertz steps um, once in a while. That lilac sat, that's the one we had the picture of at the front. Um, then uh, you got the space station, which is pretty easy. The SO50 is another common one. Then you got AO91 where the uplink is on 70 centimeters, so then you get to have some fun. On the linears with the sideband, FO29, you know, they're up, they're, all of them are up, upper sideband because you're up in VHF, UHF. So um, those are uplinks are on VHF, so not too much adjusting. And then AO73, and you get into the X's where they're on 70 centimeter uplink, so you're gonna be doing a lot more, a lot more fiddling. And since there's not really any satellites going over right now, this is gonna be just a little snippet. Um, it's about a minute and a half or so of uh, of a satellite pass at a ham fest. So you can get a good idea of, of what actually a pass is like when you're operating. When he started the video on his first contact, he was actually facing this way. So this is about halfway through the video where these clips are. He's already done almost a 180. No gaps, they're just bam, 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 right on through the lines. That's what there is, yeah. All right, so that's hopefully that gives you enough to know. You know, if it's something you want to see more of. Um, we are putting in a satellite station here at the clubhouse, um, so we got a few of us with these fancy purple people eaters, and uh, we're going to be trying to do some more 
some some more contacts, maybe some uh, activations at a POTA, maybe a weekend, you know, at the clubhouse or a Monday night. Um, so if you're interested, um, let us know, and great things will be happening at the clubhouse. So uh, these are QR codes. If you got your phone, just to the software I showed on the TV and some of the and the, the videos. If you want to see the full Doppler clip or the full polarization or that full. Um, you know, 18, 20 contact um, ham fest. So I will have the laptop up here if anyone wants to poke at the software. Come up and look at the antenna. Ask any questions. That's all I got. Fantastic, Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you. Jonathan, I have a question. How far in advance would you know if you have an opportunity for a satellite? exchange that particular day that you were planning a lot of the a lot of the caps are updated pretty frequently every couple of days so usually on stuff like the space station they don't change too much it's pretty easy to predict but uh at some of the other satellites they kind of really accurate within 30 days yeah within 30 days yep. so if, you, if you're going out you have no data you can download the file yep and are you usually you're you're good for a, you usually you're really solid for a week or two you know, and they'll tweak them throughout the time. But if you get them, um, if you get them downloaded. So, for instance, we have an, our next scheduled quota of July 23rd. We could check ahead of time to know what time of the day that would be. Yep. Best and there's actually two. Um, I'll pull it up here because um, the the software's got it kind of built in. You can kind of. It's not the greatest for doing long term stuff, um, but. Or heavens above. Yeah, heaven is heavens above. God, I, I lost my wireless here, but passes on that That's it's more than a month away at this point. But yeah, that yeah, AMSAT's a really good resource for for some of that, as you can actually go to past predictions. This has got your satellite schedules too. But if you go to past predictions, you can actually pick what you want to look at, and where you're going to be, and it'll and print out a whole schedule. You know. Down to the hour when it's going to pass, which which, uh, which azimuth it's going to be at, which elevation, so you can get a pretty decent start at. That heavens above is really nice for that too, because then you can actually see where you need to be. And so, yep, good AMSAT's a great resource for a lot of that stuff. They'll they'll also have. Uh, They'll have uh, schedules, so you can see what's uh, and its current status is kind of neat because you can see what satellites are operating. Because sometimes the one will go down or they'll take it offline for for some reason or another if they got low battery current or or something like that. So this is nice to see. You can actually see if people are getting into it or if you're expecting to get a pass and you don't, you know whether or not it was just you or whether or not there was an issue with it that day. So, amset.org, great resource. So.